Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Truce Talks. Today we have one of those longest live friendships that Truce has enjoyed. We have Jessica Swick with us now. Je Jessica was the grocery manager at the Scottsdale Whole Foods store when we first started. She is now a very successful broker of products in grocery stores. We've come a long way. Jessica, welcome. Good to see you. Good to see you, Diane. It's been a while. It has, yes. And Jessica has also been kind of a silent, quiet hand behind our success in that she consults with Stephen frequently about what's going on with grocery stores. <laughs> I don't know if Stephen would use consults or just I tell him what to do. I don't know. <laughs> that would be good because he's really, he's really come a long way and he's doing a great job. He has. He's awesome. He is, he's, he's been with us, God, now for almost five years. Is that, is that, crazy? Is that even possible? <laughs> yeah. I've known, I've known you since I think about 2010 or 11. Yeah. Yep. And I, re I remember you were our biggest booster up at that store you liked us <laughs> i did i loved your products i loved the idea of your products i am so excited to see just how much you guys have grown it's, it's, it's been amazing yeah it's been pretty pretty a pretty amazing trip indeed mm -hmm. i remember the day i ran into your husband dathan swick in that same store and i approached him did he want a sample and he said oh no i have lots of it at home i'm jessica's <laughs> husband <laughs> Yes, yes, we do. Always. What prompted you to make the change from actually physically being in a grocery store? Because you had been. You'd been in Albertsons, and then you mm -hmm. came and you were in Whole Foods. What prompted your sort of change in direction? I really wanted to do something on a larger scope. When I was in stores, I, I, I was very, I loved helping people. And I grew the stores and I grew the products, but I was very limited in the amount of people that I could touch. So now I work with clients nationwide. My, my client base is, is very diverse and I get to see the results of these better for you prod products on a larger scale. And I love that. That's very exciting for me local and and small business still very near and dear to me um but the idea is to grow the local companies to reach more people so that's really enjoy i enjoy that when you talk about diversity of products you represent without necessarily saying brand names what kind of products do you represent now and how do you go about that um so i have a couple um oil and pasta sauce brands um, I have a baby food brand. Um, I work with some Asian food in, that, that's imported. Um, and basically what I do every day is I'm the liaison between that client and our sales team. So I know a lot about my clients' businesses, um, how they wanna go to market, what their strategies are. Um, and basically I tell our sales team how to, how to do that and how to be successful and this is what you need and um, I provide them the tools. So um, we're equated to sometimes um, a quarterback or an air traffic controller and that we're organizing where all the pieces fit within the, the client to retailer relationship. So do you find yourself in store less now than you were before? Yes. So mostly you are guiding the people who are going into the store. You're yes. You've moved up the food chain, as it were. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, not directly responsible for sales. Nobody wants me selling anything. Um, I do more of the strategizing and the directing of, you know, we should do a promotion at this time of the year, uh, watching trends, stuff like that. And how long have you been doing this? I just celebrated my third anniversary. Wow. Yeah. Wow. This uh, is obviously agreeing with you then. <laughs> I do love it. Yes. But right now you're like the rest of us. You are at home and you're at home with two young boys. Yes. How's that going? 
Um, so I have Dylan, he's eight, uh, starting third grade in a couple of weeks. Wow. Um, he's bored. He's ready to start the next chapter. Um, I have enjoyed having him home with us. He's always gone to daycare and then into school. And so getting to interact with him during the day has been really fun. Um, I think it's going to be a hard transition not having him home when he does eventually transition back to in school, uh, in person schooling. But um, yeah, we're, we're tackling the boredom here in, in Arizona. It's hard to get outside this time of year. So we do a lot of indoor activities. Um, but, you know, we're, we're surviving, we're adjusting, we're learning and growing and doing what we think is best, just like everybody else. Yeah. Um, we are blessed. Our three-year-old, his private daycare has not had to close. Um, so we do, we did make the, the choice to continue him in his routine and to send him. Um, it has allowed us the, the freedom and ability to do our jobs efficiently. Um, and we had to balance the, the safety aspect with, you know, what our fears are. And we felt his daycare did a really good job of maintaining practices that would keep our family safe so and it's also i think good for logan in that he mm -hmm. is continuing the socialization process i yes. take it there are other kids there so that's got to be that's got to be a blessing in a way for him yes absolutely so are you doing homeschooling with um dylan are you do you have programs that your school has provided online for you? What, what are your tools? We did some homeschooling at the end of last year of um, the April and May timeframes. Um, they tried really hard to make it effective. I think moving into mm -hmm. this coming year, it will be more so. But it, it really, it, it wasn't providing a lot of instruction yeah. Uh, I think they did the best they could and they tried really hard. I was very satisfied with the effort. I just wasn't satisfied with the curriculum. Moving into third grade, I think we have a better plan in place. Um, I enjoy the communication that has come out of my school district. We're in the largest school district in the state. So I know that they have worked very diligently to put together a plan. Um, you know, one thing I, I, I absolutely understand, he's in the same boat as every other kid. Yeah. This entire yeah. generation is in the same boat. So it's not that he's going to be singled out because of something that happened. So every parent in the country, in the world, is going to face this question. Yep. And how we all respond and learn and grow is going to define what happens to this next generation. Yeah. It's, it's scary. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. It's it's very it's very challenging, very sort of threatening. It's like, my God, mm -hmm. this has never happened before in our existence time. So it's like, my God, what are these kids gonna be like? Yeah. You know, yeah. and Dylan's a very active kid, he got a lot going on. He's very mm -hmm. funny. <laughs> <laughs> He's a good kid. He's a really good yes. kid. So I hope this is working out well for him. How about jigsaw puzzles and games and things like that? <laughs> we we have done a, a ton of jigsaw puzzles. Um, we're just finishing up Scooby-Doo. We, we enjoyed the new Scoob movie, and he is just all into Scooby-Doo right now. So we're doing that. It's been fun. Yeah, puzzles have been a big thing here. Denis does puzzles. He's like a maniac. He sits there <laughs> and does puzzles. I, I do them online, but it's like... It's just challenging to be to be in and having a big outing being to go to the grocery store to get something every two weeks. Yeah. Where do, where do you see, do you think his school's going to open up this fall? Um, Dylan's school? With all of the different changes, they are, because school was originally supposed to open August 4th and the governor has come back and said nobody can go in 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 person until the end of August. So our school district has just said, we're gonna start August 4th, no matter what, it'll all be online. So mm -hmm. I think that's probably the best choice as things are changing so quickly. 
every two weeks we have a new update and something else is happening and then we get to the point where we're all comfortable with that change let's make some plans to move forward things happen again we at least have a date of online learning and let's get comfortable with it and if this is our reality for the next year so be it at least we have something so that doesn't really answer your question sorry <laughs> well, i don't know that there is an answer you know there's just a perception there's just an opinion mm -hmm. are you are you arizona is in a very scary place right now it is. it's extremely scary um are you feeling secure are you feeling is your, is your whole company working remotely like you are right now or have you always worked remotely um a majority of our company has always worked remotely because we're in sales um our home office is is in chicago but we have people across the country so um most of our people were set up to work from home as something we've always done um, most of our industry is similar to that. Some of our industry does have offices, but um, a lot of us do work from home. It you know, hasn't been that bad of a transition, to be honest with you. Isn't that a blessing? God, that's great. Yeah, yeah. We, we started doing remote work well before the pandemic started. You know, we were doing a, everybody deep work Wednesday. So the transition was fairly easy, but I've talked to some people. It was difficult. They've had mm -hmm. to scramble a bit set up an office how do you do it you know yeah i think the whole workplace has changed i really do it has it has um everybody is working from home now traffic is better i think um i've seen some some places around our town where they're just letting their lease go the professional buildings everybody's mm -hmm. working from home and they're going to continue to work from home so you know let's close the office so i think that's going to be Kind of the next concern um what happens to all of this industrial professional office space well you know we have a homeless situation so some of the malls that are closing are being transformed into low-income housing um small mom and pop businesses gathering together i think it's going to be kind of exciting to see what's coming yeah. but i i do i do have concerns currently about people who are running out of their their unemployment and things like that and so yeah. we're we're lucky we're just things are just rolling along mm -hmm. yep you know but the, coming out of it is going to be extremely extremely interesting yes anyway if you weren't doing this do you continue to stay in this field do you want to stay in this field going forward or what what are you looking at in the future what are you thinking because <laughs> you have a a tremendous set of tools you have a great set of tools going forward what do you want to do what do you want to do um, you know i am i am absolutely happy and blessed in this position i think this this position gives me the right amount of challenge Mm -hmm. but also the right amount of comfort where i understand the natural grocery industry um but I'm always learning something new. There's always something new happening or a new trend to watch. So I really, I can't see any potential changes. Um, I really, I don't want to make any changes, at least in this point in my life. My kids are still young. I like the freedom of working from home, um, very limited travel. So mm -hmm. no commute. It, it gives me all of the things to allow me that time to spend with my family. That's wonderful, because these are the, what they call the wonder years. So good for you, good for you. So you work with all natural food. Clients. For the most part, we consider better for you as mm -hmm. part of is, is our, the primary focus of our portfolio. Yeah. Wow. Soon. We have, we have a couple of regional brokers. Stephen's probably mm -hmm. talked to you about them. And that's going well. Our biggest problem has been really getting bottles, getting bottles and sprayers and the things like that. Because those plants closed down as well during the early stages of the pandemic. Oh, so absolutely. everybody's kind of scrambling to put themselves back together in this market. 
And are mm -hmm. you seeing that with a lot of your clients? Yeah, yeah. A lot of them, um, especially some of the import where the countries may have been a little bit more strict um, in their quarantining processes, the, the production has just significantly decreased. Um, we're starting to see a lot of that open back up now. Um, some of the, the logistics of getting stuff from point A to point B has just been terrible. Uh, getting stuff into port and through customs. It, it's, not, it's not just one part of the supply chain, it's been every part of the supply chain. And the delays are crazy ridiculous. Yeah. So, yeah, it's not just you guys. <laughs> oh, it's, yeah, it's, it's amazing. There are such delays at the ports. We're now, we're not looking at Mexico. Do we bring things in through Mexico? Is that going to be quicker? What, what, <laughs> do, what do we do? You know, mm -hmm. it's so interesting. Everybody's looking for the new solutions. Mm -hmm. you know, yep. it's because it's not going to be the same the same way um, no you, it's not no are you having those same issues with like truckers going from point a to point b yeah they're just there's not enough truckers um distribution centers were limiting load sizes and flat out canceling store deliveries because they just couldn't get product from point a to point b fast enough um wow. The, the way they prioritized things seems very smart in hindsight. Um, I think if I had been in a store, I would have been a lot more angry about it because I know they weren't getting everything they wanted and that the consumer wanted and needed. Yeah. It's definitely been a learning curve for sure. It'll be interesting to see how it all shakes out at the end of this. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Is your family is in California, right? I do have family in California, yeah. Everybody okay? So far, so good. Oh God, Knock that's on wood. Great. That's great. <laughs> yeah. All right. And I, you know, it's just like, it's really hard to talk about things now. We are going through some changes in the warehouse. We're starting to add a few people, which is nice, but there's still the same roadblocks, the transportation, the port. Mm -hmm the portholes and things like that hmm. yeah and i'm not i'm not leaving the house i'm pretty serious about it i did go down to the warehouse yesterday just to see what it looked like because it's so different it's so very very different but anywho but you're at home and you're safe and your screen just froze i'm waiting for you this happens when we're doing this sometimes, screens freeze. And if she remains frozen, there you are. Hey, you're moving, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Was I frozen to you? Yes. Okay, you were frozen to me. So I just kept on talking. <laughs> <laughs> Something I can do, I just keep on talking. Keep talking, keep swimming. Oh, so gosh. so what, are, what are your thoughts about, you were talking earlier, about this whole generation of kids that are missing social opportunities the learning that occurs in a classroom it is unique it doesn't happen when you're what what are you sort of thinking might be some of the ramifications of that what are you concerned about Whew, wow so many different things um well with dylan we're already challenged with an autism diagnosis we already know that his social interactions are going to be a challenge for the rest of his life. Um, it's a wide range of things from linguistic and, and informal speech to the impulse control and not understanding that you can't just reach out and touch somebody if they don't want you in their space. Um, we have been very blessed that we have had a lot of help um, professionally in, yeah. in figuring out ways to help him so we can continue his education at home um, as much as we can, at least with his brother and, and us. But it's definitely going to put him back and I think create some bigger differences between him and his peers, especially at the eight-year-old third grade level 
where you really start feeling more like a big kid. Mm -hmm. Um, I, it's going to be one of those things that we face every day. And when he comes home from school every day, we're going to have to talk about it. Mm -hmm. I don't think it would be any different if school were able to open, we would still have these challenges. I think we may just be farther behind in facing some of them when we do get back into school. That's an interesting thing. Yeah. I hadn't thought about that additional layer of complexity that yeah. Dylan, I don't, I don't think of him as being all that challenged. I know that he's very active, but I also know he's very verbal and he's very funny. Yes. So, so um, yeah, those, those signals that kids learn, it's a challenge when you're on the spectrum like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we do, the school district is saying that the special ed portion will still be wrapped into his day. Mm -hmm. um, I'm excited to see exactly what that is going to entail, um, how it will be different online versus in person. Um, but yeah, he is very high functioning. A lot of the time you can't tell with autism by looking at somebody or sometimes even with a case like Dylan, you can't tell just by talking to them. Mm -hmm. Um, so it will be interesting to see how it plays out over the coming year and what all they are able to do and work into the system. Cause I know he's not the only kid. <laughs> oh God, no, no. The spectrum is expanding as you know. Yes. And I've always had this private little theory in the back of my mind that definitely, definitely related to the chemical saturated environment that we live in. Oh, you know, absolutely. This is, this is uh, unprecedented. Mm -hmm. So maybe with the air becoming cleaner and stress becoming lower because more and more people are going to work at home, maybe some of these issues will have more resolution going forward. I don't know. If but we can it, make the changes long term, mm -hmm. definitely. Yeah. yeah. I just think, I think maybe we will. You know, think what this is going to do in a way we don't all have to be gathered in cities anymore. We can spread out across the country. Yeah. You know, right away, I'm mean, hearing cities are are literally recruiting people to come. And if you're working remotely, come here. The cost of living is less. Our school system is wonderful. Yada yada yada. Would you yada yada yada? Would you Would you guys ever consider moving somewhere? No, not really. You're all. We're happy where we are. Yeah, yeah. Well, you got a, you got a great house. You got great things going on. Can we come back maybe and talk with you in six months or so and see how your situation has changed, has stayed the same? What I'm oh, trying absolutely. to do is talk to people during the pandemic, which I frequently call the pandemonium, um, <laughs> and say, okay, what's changed? How are you? What's it look like outside now? Can we come back and talk to you? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. I have one last question for you, Jessica. Yes, ma'am. If you could have dinner with anyone on the planet, living or dead, who would you want to have this hypothetical dinner with? That's a good question. I think I would like to have dinner with my grandparents. <sighs> tell, tell. There, there's, I, um, my grandfather passed away. I was a senior in high school. It was very sudden. Um, and then we moved in with my grandma and I got to hear a lot of her stories, but you know, you, senior in high school, you don't pay attention. Mm -hmm. Um, I know she wrote a lot of it down and my aunts have done a great job of recording her history, but I don't know as much about my grandfather. Um, he was very private. So I think sitting down and talking to him a little bit more with the extra 20 years of perspective I have now, I think that would be really awesome to hear their stories and, and hear them one more time with a different set of ears. That's lovely. That's <laughs> lovely. Yeah. And you know, that's, that's really remarkable. We get, we get such a diversity of, of answers from, from movie characters through all sorts of things, but that's, that's a very <laughs> touching one. And we, people say, I'd like to talk to my ancestors. I'd like to know a little about, about who I am. Yeah. You know? 
Thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. And I really value your friendship after all these years. I really do. You were instrumental in helping us grow. And my great thanks to both you and Dathan for all you do for us. Well, we are very excited to see how much you have grown. And we definitely expect to see bigger and better things coming I think soon. so. <laughs> I think so. That's our goal. I love it. That's our goal. Hey, everybody, thank you very much for joining us for this particular episode of Truce Talks with Jessica, Jessica Swift, Swift, who is a broker in our field, and it's always wonderful to get that background information. If you have any ideas, somebody you'd like us to talk to locally, I'm reaching out all over the place. Let me know. And thanks for listening. Thanks for being there. I can't do it without you. Take care of yourselves. Wash your hands. Bye. Bye.